Hi, it's Cody here from Dungeon Mechanic. Today, we're gonna build a room. Come with me as we roll on some tables. See what we got. So we've got our nice template here. We're gonna check out what creatures we can come up with, what locations we can find, the contents in this location, and any other sort of fun miscellaneous for it. So first thing we're gonna do is roll on our creature types. Let's see what we got. That's a one. With a one, we have aberration. Aberration, those are like beholders or mind flayers. Those are those are good ones. I there's lots of fun flavor in there. Next up, let's check out our locations. This table, courtesy of Sly Flourish. And our next roll here is an 11. With an 11, we have an academy. Okay, so we've got aberrations and academies. Ooh, you know what's a good aberration is a uh, is a flump. Flumps are one of my favorites. So maybe getting uh, some ideas here of a flump college. So next we need to see what type of contents are in this room. This is an abbreviated version of the uh, room contents from uh, the fifth edition DMG. Let's see, that's a four. Four is gonna be a monster. So there's definitely a monster in here. That sounds good. Let's think what kind of room it is. So on this table, we've got these room types. This is a D8 roll here. So public assembly, that'd be something like a, like a gathering hall, containment would be a prison, uh, pleasure could be like a game room or a spa. General would just be, you know, like a, like a kitchen, things like that. War and conflict, you know, all of these, there's, there's different types for these rooms. So let's see what we get. That's a one, it's a public assembly. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. We have aberration. Those are fun. Maybe mind flares are even there too. We have uh, taking place in a public assembly place of an academy, and there's definitely a monster in there. You know, maybe it's worth figuring out what the ancestry is of the academy that the monster, this aberration, is going to be inhabiting. So. Got some ancestries here. Let's see. Comes up a 13. Ghost. Okay. So a ghost academy <laughs> with a with an aberration in it. All right, that's uh, that's some juicy stuff right there. So all right, let's let's take a break and do some some concept percolation, and we'll be right back. So we've got a few ideas here. Let's see, we've got, uh, after thinking this through, the first one being a cosmic horror haphazardly summoned into a college of the paranormal. There's a lot of fun flavor there for NPCs to maybe be interacting. Uh, the other one we have is a flump academy that's been infiltrated by a roaming banshee and I think I like that. Again, big fan of flumps. So let's think through what a this room could look like. So I got some basic tips here that I like to keep in mind when I'm crafting a room. So I want to think about the lights, the smells, the sounds, how you get in, how you leave, uh, you know, what the walls, uh, ceilings, floors look like. All of that little bit of detail is going to add more immersion to your players. So in thinking of the Flump Academy being infiltrated by the Banshee, we know it's an academy. The room that we got was a public assembly. So we're gonna say this is the, the entrance, the entrance to the Flump Academy. And this Flump Academy, um, one thing I like to think about Flumps is they can fly, they levitate, right? So instead of something being terrestrial based, it would be more vertical. And they like to live in the Underdark too. So this Flump Academy, maybe instead of being a structure above ground, it's more of a, a silo that goes underground. 
And so the, the entrance of this place would probably be welcoming to bipedal creatures, right? So let's say there are uh, a large wooden doors. We know that there's maybe some, you know, arcane decorations. So decorations. We know that it's needs to lead down, so there's a spiral staircase down to the ground. And let's think about the illumination here. So it's an academy. What sets a good tone for an academy for like a school or anything, I think. Uh, I think back to you know, common fantasy tropes like lots of lots of candles everywhere. So um, candles and lanterns. I gotta spell things right. Lanterns provide lighting. And <laughs> here's the fun one. So we're thinking about smells. Here's the thing about flumps is that uh, one of their defense mechanisms is farts. So if we're imagining this banshee has infiltrated this area, you know, banshees, they can sense other creatures' presences within five miles. So let's say this banshee has sensed the presence of this flump academy and has rushed in and is scaring all of these flumps. Well, it's going to sting pretty bad. So uh, let's an overwhelming smell of flump flatulence fills the chamber. And then we also have our uh, screaming banshee terrifying the three so we've got a basic room figured out we know that there's going to be a conflict here between the flumps and the and the banshee so let's actually sort of design this encounter right so we know that we want our players to have some things to interact with from our role here, the contents is monster. We know our our banshee is hostile. But why is our banshee hostile? I don't know. Let's maybe there's some behaviors we can figure out here. Oh, I'm gonna roll. See what we come up with. See if there's a good reason. Seven superior. Mm. So the banshee the lumps are inferior creatures to inhabit the area. So, got some doors, uh, some decorations in here. Now let's think about some narrative. So, I'm going to take what we've got here and start crafting it into a narrative. So we're back after taking our, our notes here and synthesizing them into more of a, of a visceral description. So what I've sort of translated these into is the Academy stands before you, a modest structure made of rough cut stone rising no more than 12 feet high. So we're describing the outside of the area as the party approaches. And again, we want to hint that it's more underground than above ground. And so they see these large, ornate wooden double doors, and they're flung open, revealing a scene of chaos. And inside the foyer, you see books and papers scattered about as floating jellyfish-like creatures flee in panic toward the large spiral staircase leading downward into the rest of the school. The ghastly apparition screams at the frightened creatures, three of which cower in fear near the candles and lanterns lighting the entryway. The strong stench of flump flatulence fills the chamber. <laughs> so, 
uh, we've, we've adequately sort of described the scene like we've set we've set the scene here but really to make this more than just a room and a possible encounter let's think about things that we can add for the party to interact with so two things that come out to me in particular are one we've got a banshee why is the banshee there maybe there's some story lore associated with it two are the flumps they are obviously in a state of distress they uh, would appreciate being calmed down so we'll do a little bit of encounter design here so first let's talk about calming down flumps so these flumps are in a state of panic um, I'm just thinking, you know, your average sort of tier two party coming in here. We would say this would require a, let's say DC 12 uh, charisma check to calm them down. Uh, on success, uh, one will flee down into the uh, spiral staircase. On failure, well, this is where it gets fun. On failure, the flump's gonna fart. <laughs> the flump uh, farts on the uh, character, causing, uh, let's just say, it's fun, 1d4 poison damage. Do a little bit of formatting here. And there we go. So, calming down the flumps. That sounds like something fun to do. So, with our our Banshee though, our Banshee is hostile. So, let's get dealing with Banshee. So the Banshee is hostile. This would take a really strong sort of persuasion check or charisma check just to even figure out what they're upset about. So as DM, you know, just kind of leave that up to you. But I'll say their main priority is getting rid of the flumps. So they may ignore the party until a certain level of threat has been established by them. So we'll say dealing with the Banshee is a DC 12 a charisma check to get the Banshee's attention away from the flumps. On, on success, Banshee will target the party. Their turn. On failure, Banshee will target flumps. Specifically, the remaining flumps. When all the flumps are gone from the room, Banshee will head down the spiral staircase. So, what's nice here is that we've we've established a few different goals for the party, right? So they can calm down the flumps, try to get them out of the room while the party deals with the Banshee. And then we've also established that this Banshee is going after the Flumps primarily and will even chase them down into the rest of the Academy. So there's a good bit of conflict there. With dealing with the Banshee, there's a, an opportunity for uh, the party to, there's a time constraint essentially, you know? Like the Banshee, if there's three Flumps in there, Banshee's going after one, you know, trying to pick them all off. You know, once all the flumps are gone, then they're going to go try to get some more. Otherwise, you know, if the party's there, can kind of take the aggro, take the attention away from it, then there's an opportunity for the flumps to, to live another day. And so here you go. Well, now that we have our scene set, let's go ahead and let's name this. What shall this room be? Uh, or this encounter, I guess. Let's say 
the Blanche Lent Plum Academy. Uh, let's go. Alliteration, maybe. The flatulent flum foyer. <laughs> okay, and with that, we have made a room. So, thank you for dungeon crafting with me today on the Dungeon Mechanic. My name's Cody. Stick around. We'll do we'll do it again sometime. Have a good one.